So this week we're at Upham Farm in Exeter. Really nice set of lakes, just a day ticket fishery. Lots and lots of really small ponds in a row, all full of carp, bream. Suffered badly with erosion over the years. So we're just gonna start um, repairing a lot of the undercut banks. And uh, yeah, see how we get on. People do moan when we do this, but then a year later, when it looks great and the banks are stabilised again, this is all rubble along here where these divides. In the past, people have dumped rubble down here. So you're trying to move it out of the way. And this is very weak, so whenever you put a digger bucket down, it just collapses. So you've obviously, health and safety-wise, you've got to be careful. It's all red clay through here, so then rectifying it, putting it right like this, turning it over. It looks a mess at the minute. And people look at it and go, oh, you ruined it, you ruined it. But what you understand is, we then plant along here. Now there's no undercut there. That's a safe bank now, and the plants do the work for you. So then you plant into all this mulch, and then they fill into the bank, and then it's sound. The undercut's gone, no dry collapsing banks anymore. Plug in all the plants in there, we plant them hand width apart, and just keep going. And then the trees that you leave behind, taking out any rubbish, so these little ones here can stay. I mean, that one is, is on, well, eventually that'll go in, because it's difficult to, to plant in front of that. But we're obviously leaving what we can in, that big one up there. That big bad boy up there weighs about a tonne and a half. That was in the margins, that's out now, and then we'll plant in front of it. So whenever we're taking a tree out of the water, replacing it with something more suitable. So you're never destroying habitat, you're replacing habitat. Like this one here. You take this horrible thing out here, because it's full of feeders and lime. And then uh, replace it with plants, like here even when you stand close to the margin. If I, well, I'm not going to, because it's very, very weak there. It's undercut by about a foot, roughly to where my foot is now. That's hollow under here. See, and again, juncus, that's why I don't like juncus, because it just does that, sits in a clump. You just keep going, 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 going. Round here, this is where the water for the whole fishery comes in off the fields, etc. So leave this ball rushing here. It's full of fish in here normally. Yeah, look, just got to jump up there, look. You see him in there moving the reeds. But again, no need to, no, need, no one really fishes this pond. So again, just rectify the margin and sort it out. And that is what we're doing this week. So we get calls a lot of the time, especially this time, and people say, oh, the lake's not holding water, it's not, it's leaking, etc." And a lot of it is when you plant trees on dividing walls, um, which you should never do, and tree roots. Some people seem to think they bind the bank together, and I never agree with that. I mean, you plant a tree on a divider more, there's only one thing that's going to happen. It takes years, obviously. Um, so what I've had to do here, this underneath me is pretty hollow. It's a divider more between two pots. And there was a big tree here, which was not doing great anyway. It was leaning in the water, so that's gone. And then I've taken a load of clay from over here, enlarged this little area, which would be great for plants, and that like a filter, so the water's going through into the other pond, and then I've took all that, it's a right mess at the moment, took all that clay and shored this up. So this was hollow under here, it was literally undermined. And now it's, um, we can plant into that, you see. And then I can nick a bit more later on. And the trick now is to go along here, and that's all massively undercut, full of tree roots. Obviously don't want to lose any good trees, but then we can come along here and plant into here. This is going to be thick. And then plants are filters basically they're soaking up phosphorus soaking up nitrogen which what algae feeds on so all these lakes that suffer serious algal blooms that they can't sh get rid of you, you, plants are the way forward long term plants are the way forward they're doing a good job those plants and then we've obviously we've thinned these out and spread them around more we've done that bank over there look. and that whole bank where the boys have graded it i took out a huge amount of crap over there it was overhanging by nearly 15 foot it's only a foot deep under there, and all right, the anglers like it, because they go, oh, the fish are under there, but it'll all grow back. And so instead of having something that where they're losing, and these are sort of just general day ticket anglers who are just losing half the fish they hook. So what actually that'll be, just a complete fringe of nice green growth, which you can safely fish to, you can fish over it, round it, do what you like. It won't do any harm at all. So that's two lakes done. We've tidied up that corner, and then I've used the clay to chamfer up this, this side here. Now it's just a bit more intricate in amongst these trees. 
the boys have finished doing the other lake and then they are plucking bulrush out which is encroaching quite a lot and we're going to take all that out along there regrade the bank which is really undercut and then replace it with iris and all the other mix of plants so yes you're removing plants but you're replacing them with more suitable plants and that's what we like to do Removing bulrush, replacing it with iris. This whole bank was unfishable really because of the bulrush. Grade this back, plant it with iris, and uh, yeah, we shake the banks. The undercut's not too bad this side, but that side was terrible. Yeah, it was terrible, but it's all right now. People go, oh, you've got to mind the birds when you're doing all this work. You really disturb them. It's like, right, okay, well, they, it's like the fish. They just follow you around. As soon as you disturb anything, they're absolutely loving it. All day, they're like pets. They just follow you around. So look at the fish. You imagine carp doing what these ducks are doing. It's exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter if you're snag removing, building swims. If you're just in the water turning it over this time of year, it just creates movement and shifting stuff, and the fish love it. And so do the ducks. They're having a lovely day, these guys. So it does look a bit extreme, some of the banks, but it had to be done. They were literally caving in, falling in. And if you just obviously do the work but leave it with no nothing, then it's just going to carry on. I've done a lot of these projects. And if you keep the birds off, look after the plants, by the end of the summer, it'll look amazing. Everyone always moans when you're doing it, but they're just so delicate, these banks, that it all needed doing. So you can see this is obviously a lot better now. There's nothing along here, just collapsing. Not safe. And eventually, you know, it keeps going back. These, these ponds were out here. So putting the right plants in. And you do have to sacrifice a bit of bank sometimes, make a bit of a mess sometimes, you know. Nature is what it is, so the bank's curving around, so you just have to do what you can. But yeah, it's all good. back in a year's time when we're netting. Well, we we'll netting in the winter, but this time next year it'll look amazing. So just to get the digger in this avenue of beautiful trees, we had to take a few of the spindly ones out, but trees will like fish and plants if there's too many. They're all trying to get up there to get the light. So we took a few that were not doing too great anyway, like these little thin ones, just to be able to get the digger in really. But, uh, Starting to take shape, just needs time now. It needs a bit of respect from anglers not to smash all the plants up. There was a massive, massive tree in here. Underneath it was just terrible. It was all stinks and stuff. Obviously the wind blows down there as well. So you imagine a big, big old tree in here, which used to obviously be on the bank. No one plants trees in the water. But by removing that and planting this Carex down there, an iris, then people will eventually put swims in over here and then um, they can just safely fish. And this will be as thick as this here. So this, all of this round here will eventually look like this bit here. Which is lovely. Perfectly safe to fish in and amongst and on and over the top. And, and that's what you want. You can't beat that, in my opinion. You really can't. It just looks great. People often say to us, oh, you've ruined the fishing for a fortnight now. 
it'll be rubbish. Well, just down here, there. Yeah, I'll see how close I can get. I was only in there with a five ton digger about 40 minutes ago. You see them turning there, look. And they absolutely love it. Fair, fair enough, it's a, it's a, you know, there's lots of carp in here. They do get fed though, they get looked after. They're, they're a lot better than they used to be when I first came down years and years ago when they were in the trophy state. A lot, lot better now. Lots of carp and bream. But um, everywhere we go, from spring onwards and start doing this sort of work. The fish just follow you around, like the ducks. The fish just follow you around. And they're just rooting up where all the moved material around, just clay and obviously all the bits and pieces are just in there straight away and people think you ruin the fishing. You think ruin the fishing? It's a man. That what you're doing is ridiculous. Just a, just typical. I went down the lake and then we were doing some work, that's why we didn't catch. It's like, come on. I mean, you're involved, free lines are anything down the lake. Honestly. And I see this pure thing, it's so much fun. A couple of other times, people would come with them today, they turn out with eight tonne of gear. They start banging in. Yeah, they're just banging in. Look up there, look. Yeah, they're going on about that. Again, I was in here not long ago at all. With a five ton machine turning the bank over, it's full of fish. It's like when we feed ponds, lakes, we chuck bucketfuls in. Oh, you don't want to do that, they won't eat that. They won't find that, you have to do it gently. It's like, come on, don't be ridiculous. But you're always learning. Well, we're always learning. Some of the people who meet along the way, but, uh, you just got to get on, get it done. The fish are absolutely loving it, ripping all up in there. But bearing in mind when you're around a fish with those work being done, don't write off your day. <laughs> in fact, quite often it's, uh, it's pretty good. All now, it's broke down the suntan lotion. <coughs> so tomorrow we're going to build a couple of platforms. Well, not platforms, but it just swims into the bank. And today, we're just boys are finishing up planting that lake above. Just want to show you why we're doing this. If you look here serious hole there and that just undermines everything so obviously anglers have done that just fell in almost so you have to rectify these banks at some point the longer you leave it and the more you let your banks erode this is what happens trees end up going in and eventually they fall in especially James is about to have an otter fence installed here behind here so obviously you've got to be a bit sensible and go okay well if those trees come down in a storm they're going to take out a very expensive otter fence so all these things need to be considered rather than just old bob who likes fishing in a particular spot so uh, that's why we're doing what we're doing So this little pond here, it's quite deep this one, full of bream and carp. And we've made a lot of difference in this corner. And you see the water in this corner is completely overgrown. It's got let a huge amount of light. A number of reasons. You couldn't see anything in here. Now this is all fishable, all safe. The bank's been regraded. Undercut's all gone obviously. And uh, 
There was no grass growing on here because of the trees. So now the grass will be able to grow on there because we let more light on that bank. The boys are just de-rooting it after we took the trees out. And these other trees will do a lot better. The bamboo will do a lot better. It's good. This is a, only small ponds here, but um, they will be improving all the time now because James is putting an otter fence in. Once that's in, gives us a lot more peace of mind to concentrate on getting the cart bigger. A lot more development work in the next year or two. We'll see it improving even more. Right, we've done 5,000 plants now. Done a lot of work. It's Friday morning now. It's been here since Monday morning. It's lots and lots of work. So we've worked all the lakes from up there. There's one, two, three, four. This is the fifth one. So yeah, it's been good. Morning today. So we're in here yesterday moving material around and today they're spawning. They're gonna smash the plants up. <laughs> <laughs> so once we've graded the bank out, it's important to get the roots out. A lot of people just bury them. You've got to get as many as you can out, obviously to stop regrowth, but also they weaken the bank because nothing can really bind. So get them out, regrade it, and then plant like Dave's doing down there. And this can all a bit of topsoil on it. You can always plant a few nice wild flower seed or whatever you want in here. Makes it a lot safer for fishing. Light on there, it's so all good. It's warming like mad on here now. <laughs> Typical. So, I've done five, over 5,000 plants. Fish is spawning now. Just a bit more raking to do, a bit more tidying up. Open up these lakes loads. They look a lot bigger, a lot better, a lot more healthy. You don't worry about upsetting a few anglers, they don't know what we're doing. They'll benefit. We're doing it for the benefit of the fish, which benefits the anglers. A lot of planting. Loads of fishing these days. But for the next week or two, obviously the fishing's going to be real patchy, simply because the fish are spawning, and they will be spawning. But yeah, it's going to come on leaps and bounds now. We've made a real big dent in all the... The banks are safe now on all the lakes. We haven't done the specimen lake. James is going to build swims. We're going to build a couple of platforms. Well, a couple of swims with sleepers now. And then we're going to go home. It's been a good week. We've got a hell of a lot done. Always helps when you've got a decent digger. Been well looked after by Kristen. Oh, sorry, James and Jane. And uh, it's been rather pleasant. The weather's been kind to us as well, so it's been very, very good. And then we'll come back in the winter for our annual netting. And things will just keep improving, especially with the otter fence. That's, that's something that has to be done. They go mad in these reeds now. <laughs> so yeah, it's a week done at Up and Farm. And go home, have a bit of a rest, and then five o'clock Monday morning, we're over in Essex, doing similar sort of work for next week. All good. <laughs>